Well, the unmet need is very clear. Unfortunately, we cure very few metastatic breast cancers, uh, with rare exception. Um, this remains a huge challenge. Moreover, um, we need to be concerned about quality of life and make sure that our treatments uh, don't negatively impact quality of life too severely uh, to, be, to be tolerable. Um, that's a very fine balance. And uh, I think um, the older I get, the more experience I have, um, the less ambitious I am in terms of using uh, you know, toxic therapies. Uh, I've become much more constrained um, uh, over time in considering quality of life issues and uh, introducing the concept of uh, chemotherapy holidays from time to time, things like this. Um, those are really important. They're very important to patients. It's, it's critical not to overtreat with chemotherapeutics. And uh, from time to time when I do consultations from uh, outside uh, clinicians referring patients in, I, I see patients who have maybe crossed the, the boundary. They've been maybe overtreated, have too much peripheral neuropathy to be acceptable, for example. Uh, too many cytopenias. <clears throat> so I think it's really critical to follow our patients very closely, make sure we understand what their lifestyle is, what their daily activities are, uh, how the treatments are impacting their uh, family situations, even simple things like transportation. Um, you know, giving a weekly uh, venerelbine regimen is going to be more challenging than an every three week uh, chemo regimen, for example. And these are the things that patients use to weigh in on the decision if you're at equipoise between two different future treatment options, that might be a deal breaker. If they live a great distance from clinic, it might be, it might be too much of a problem to do a weekly treatment, for example. So simple things like that. Uh, IV access is, is sometimes a, a barrier even. And uh, as professionals, we don't really think about those things because they're so routine, they're so automatic. But for patients, they're extremely disruptive. And so um, um, we have active treatments. Uh, we certainly need to do better. So there's a lot of opportunity in terms of clinical research now for promising and hopeful new treatments for metastatic disease. But what the patients want and demand indeed is a cure for metastatic breast cancer. And we're just not there yet, sadly. We're not there. A lot more work needs to be done for advanced disease. And there's a, a growing swell of uh, enthusiasm to uh, contribute more research dollars to the advanced disease state. Um, because of its overall poor prognosis and outcomes. Uh, even though it's better now than it has been historically, it's still not good enough. Uh, it's not acceptable and we need to do better. I think we, we are always going to need some cytotoxic treatment approaches. It has been and remains the backbone of treatment for advanced breast cancer uh, for sure. And consequently, it's very likely we'll need new classes of cytotoxics. Uh, I don't think the story is over yet for chemotherapy. I wish it was, but I don't think it is. Ironically, if you really look critically at the mechanism of how most chemotherapeutics work, um, they are targeted agents. Uh, their targets were, were well known to the people that invented them back in the day. And nowadays we, nowadays we might call those targeted therapies instead of chemotherapy. CDK4 and CDK6 inhibition would be a classic example. If that molecule would have been discovered in the 1970s instead of uh, the you know, 20 teens, it would have been another class of chemotherapeutic. Uh, but we don't call it that now. Um, but if you really think about it, it has many chemo-like attributes, neutropenia in particular. So um, I think that we'll continue to evolve the story and uh, we are going to need cytotoxic mechanisms of action, probably in partnership with other targeted therapeutic approaches or immunotherapeutic approaches uh, to be sure, and also as cytotoxic payloads for antibody drug conjugates. The field is very exciting and moving quickly for antibody drug conjugates, both in the HER2 positive space where there are some new antibody drug conjugates that look to be more potent than TDM1 in preclinical models, and also some new antibody drug conjugates with great promise in triple negative disease that are really almost you know, quite unexpected, if you will, that these targets would be important in that subset of patients with high unmet need. So at the end of the day, antibody drug conjugates are cytotoxic chemotherapy, just a different nuance in the delivery mechanism. I think there's more uh, need also for orally bioavailable cytotoxics to make it more convenient for patients maybe not to have uh, chronic parenteral access and the complications that can happen from 
central venous catheters, and infection, blood clots, et cetera. So I think um, the field will move forward. There will be new cytotoxics uh, in our future, and they will most likely be partnered with other targeted therapeutic approaches. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, they will remain a backbone in the armamentarium for metastatic breast cancer.